it is December 21st, winter solstice. First day of winter and it is gray and cloudy, actually lightly snowing. And so I thought what better of a day than this to do a one year review on my solar system because it is about a year since I first got it up and running. I'm walking through a forest. Why am I walking through a forest? If I wanted to do a review on my solar system, it's because this isn't a forest. This is my backyard that has about 500 or so trees in it that I have planted from saplings. And they are causing a bit of a problem for my solar system as if the snow and the low angle of the sun wasn't enough. I have some trees that are causing me an issue. And let's take a look at my solar panels. So here they are covered in snow and the sun is partially casting a shadow on the panels because of these trees. If you watched my first video on my solar system, you may remember me saying that this system was only supposed to be here temporarily. I put it here just as a test trial or test run before plan is, plan was, plan is to move it to an off-grid cabin that I'm building up in north central Idaho. That project has been delayed a bit, so this still sits here for a while. When I installed this, oh, the snow was really picking up. When I installed this last winter, these trees were not a problem. Uh, even in the winter months, they were just fine. And the plan was, it was the system was not going to be here any later than maybe midsummer. But here we are into the following winter, and I can't believe it, but these trees probably grew about three feet, three and a half, maybe even four feet in one year. And that was enough for them to cast a shadow on here. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a kind of a problem. Uh, if these were going to be here uh, permanently, I would have to give serious consideration to lifting them up or cutting down a bunch of trees. I don't want to cut the trees down. I like them here. They provide a lot of uh, serenity and peacefulness in my backyard, so I want to leave them. But um, I actually have gotten used to having these panels here, and I like them a lot, so I'm going to have to give that some thought, uh, what I'm going to do with them. I'm going to get a different set to take up to the cabin when we're ready for that, or if I'm just going to let these things go and, and take them up. We'll see about that. Uh, again, if I'm going to leave them here, I got to do something different um, because in the winter months, they're not doing so good. So let's see what they're Let's see what they're doing right now. I just can't imagine they're doing much. Uh, in fact, I checked a while ago and I think they were pulling out all of them together. We're putting out a whopping about 60 watts. Again, it's snowing, it's cloudy, and they're covered in snow. I can't even believe they're putting out 60 watts. These panels, by the way, there's these panels combined are there's 16 of them, 16 390 watt panels that are rated for that comes out to about 6200 watts i've actually measured them putting out over 8000 watts on a bright sunny summer day um here though uh yeah not doing so well so my system is split into two arrays array one which is the farthest eight panels and array two the closest ones so right now number one is producing seven watts the other one i think is doing 28. Uh, take a look up here let me go ahead and clean the snow off of these and see if we make any difference whatsoever. Well, so that actually made a bigger difference than what I thought it would. We went from 24 watts being generated to 154 watts. So a six fold difference, which is great, except that still 154 watts is not much. Not when you compare it to the six to 8,000 watts that I was generating with this system during summer. So definitely got to do something. Um, 
you know, it's not a big deal for me right now because I'm not dependent upon these for power, but I will be when I get them moved up north, which was actually the whole idea behind this exercise was to find out all the weak spots, make all the mistakes here, where hopefully I can get those corrected once I move it up north. So several things I need to do, get them elevated, um, change the angle of attack or make it adjustable. And this is a big one. My plan was to put these panels on the roof of the cabin that I'm building. Not gonna do that anymore because I need to be able to change the angle, which I can't really do very well with a roof mount. So I will mount those off to the side and put them on a system where I can change the angle, you know, throughout the seasons. Well, let's go inside and I wanna talk about one other issue that I have discovered this past uh, summer that I will be addressing soon. Well, it's a lot warmer in here than it was outside, but it's still kind of chilly in my unheated garage. Before I touch on the presumed issue that I was mentioning, I'd first like to go into a couple other things about this system. As I already mentioned numerous times that this system was putting out between four and 8,000 watts during the peak sun hours of the summer. But what, of course, what everyone really wants to know is what are the max kilowatt hours per day? Well, that's a little bit tricky. What I can tell you is last winter between January and March timeframe, I was averaging 24 kilowatt hours a day. Now that was enough to run 3000 watts of space heaters for five, six hours a day and allow enough power left over to run most of my house lightings, computers, kitchen appliances, refrigerator, microwave, toaster oven, that sort of things as well as my deep well pump all the rest of the day. So speaking of deep well pump, that is a question I get asked about a lot. What is the startup amperage of my pump? What is the horsepower of it? I don't know that information. What I can tell you is my well is 100, I believe 177 feet, and the running wattage I have measured of my deep well pump is 1200 watts. Again, I don't know the startup, but it starts up you know, flawlessly, not even a hiccup at all, so that's great. Now back to the space heaters a little bit, those 3000 watts of space heaters that I was running, like I said, five, six hours a day were great because we could put those just for my wife and I are working during the day in the house. So my heat pump, I never did hook up to the solar system last winter because my heat pump is all electric, including an electric element backup. So I knew it just couldn't handle it. As it was, my batteries were always in the bulk charge mode, never went into absorption or never into flow. So they were struggling as it was. No way could my system last winter handle the heat pump. But with respect to peak kilowatts produced, the most I've ever measured is 41 kilowatt hours in a day. And that was around March 31st of last year, right around about 11 days past spring equinox, which kind of makes sense. But that doesn't paint the whole picture because why wouldn't I be producing more than that in the summer, even though my panels were angled more for a spring equinox rather than a summer solstice? The answer to that is in late spring going into summer, when I was no longer needing the space heaters, my all of a sudden my batteries were going into float mode most all of the peak hours. So they were topped off. So basically the panels are just sitting there idle for most of the good sun hour days, not producing power. Had I been able to use more of that power, I'm sure I would have far exceeded that 41 kilowatt hours per day. With that in mind, when I saw the charge controller sitting in float mode, basically most of the day, all through the peak sun hour days, I decided to revisit the heat pump and could it run my air conditioning during the summer? According to the nameplate information on my heat pump, it needs 16.7 running amps or about 4,000 watts. Well, this is a little bit more than the 3,000 watts that I was running for my space heaters, but hey, this was summer. So I thought, hey, that's not gonna be a problem at all. What was an issue is the startup amperage. It requires 82 amps of startup or about 20,000 watts. My charge controller here is a Sun Gold Power. It's 6,000 running amps with an 18,000 peak, but that's for only 20 seconds. So a bit short of the 20,000 watts needed for startup according to the nameplate information on my heat pump. I had on a couple of occasions ran too many space heaters while running a toaster oven and a microwave and a few other high amperage draw things. I had tripped the 
inverter a couple of times and it just shut off no harm no foul so i thought you know i'm just going to go ahead and roll the dice maybe this is a little bit crazy on my part but i decided to go ahead and roll the dice and hook the air conditioner up the heat pump up and see if it would run it but i had yet another problem you have a transfer switch but it's maxed out i had no more slots in it to be able to run my air conditioner so i did something a little unconventional and i'm quite sure is not up to code so just coincidentally, the sub-panel breaker for my heat pump is just on the other side of this wall. So I punched a hole through the wall, disconnected the wires, ran them into the garage down here below, put in two 50 amp plugs, one bringing power from the grid and one attached to the inverter, and then a plug-in that went two back to the heat pump. So how did it work out? Well, as I've already alluded, it worked out really well. It ran, as far as I can tell, pretty much flawlessly all last summer. And as it turned out, the running wattage was only 2,500 watts, not the 4,000 watts that I was kind of anticipating. So now to get back to the issue that I was speaking of when we were still outside. That relates back to my Sun Gold inverter. Again, it's a 6,000 watt running, 18,000 watt peak. I noticed that at times when the air conditioner is running and running a lot of other utilities, it was getting really hot, felt like hot to the touch. And it has some internal fans, they were not kicking on. So what I did was put on a couple of different fans. I put these two fans on top, I put another one behind and another one up from underneath the inverter with just with a manual switch. And I'd kick those on during the day when it was getting warm and that cooled it right down. And again, it ran all summer flawlessly. But later this fall, when I realized my warranty was about to expire on this thing, I thought, you know, I better check that out, make sure I don't have a warranty issue, a warranty claim issue. So I contacted SunGold, and to their credit, they were very responsive. The information I got back from them was that, yes, it does have a couple of fans that kick on, but they don't kick on until it reaches an internal temperature of 60 C or about 140 degrees Fahrenheit, and then they only kick on about half speed. Once the temperature reaches 80 C or about 176 degrees Fahrenheit, then it kicks on to full speed. Then they recommended if I was still concerned that I use an infrared temperature sensor like this to measure the temperature. So by the time I get around to this, it is now fall. The temperatures are cooling. I'm not using the air conditioning as much and the inverter is not getting hot in the way that it was. So this sensor, while great and I can measure temperature, I'm not measuring anything that's even warm to the touch, let alone hot. So I have this for next summer for sure. So I'm going to give Sun Gold the benefit of the doubt that those temperatures are normal and within spec. It still seems kind of hot to me. I like the idea of cooling them down. The fans that I put on worked great, but manually switching them was kind of a pain in the butt. So what I'm going to do is I got this temperature sensing switch. But the problem with it is 12 volt, my system is 48 volts, so I also got a transformer to take step 48 volts down to 12 volts. I'm going to connect that all up. The other thing I'm going to do is the way I have this tucked into the corner here doesn't really allow for that great of ventilation. But this is the spot, this is where I had to have it. It's not ideal, but it's really where I needed to put it. So my plan is I'm going to change the orientation of the inverter, rotate it, perpendicular and put it against this wall where it can get much better airflow and then probably move my charge controllers over this wall again have a fan both on the charge controllers which were not a real problem they didn't get really warm but i'm going to go ahead and put a fan on them a couple of fans on the inverter so if you're interested in seeing that how that's done how i do that uh, look for it and this is actually a good time to just like subscribe if you haven't already we appreciate that and then you'll get notified of when I have that video ready to go. In addition to that, one of the other projects I have lined up that I would like to do, this kind of, again, kind of an experimental thing, is I do have some extra solar panels that I want to mount to a tilt system where I can adjust the angle of the panels and then check that out. Put them into the sun and rotate them the same 45 degrees that I currently have my existing panels and then and measure the wattage output and then rotate that to an appropriate angle for my latitude for winter and see how much of an improvement I can get. If you find that interesting, again, look for that video coming up, hopefully in the not too distant future. 
Incidentally, before starting the indoor section of this video, I noticed that the sun was starting to peek out through the clouds, so I did another check on how the panels were doing. They went from doing that previous 154 watts to 1,411 watts, so a pretty good improvement considering that there's still some cloud cover and they are being cast with a shadow from the trees. If I could get them elevated and rotate the angle to a more appropriate winter solstice angle, I could probably at least double that. Worth doing, I think. So that's another project that I'm going to be looking at doing in the hopefully not too distant future. Well, if you have any suggestions or thoughts, questions, please drop those in the comments below. And until I see you in one of the next videos, stay safe and keep building your dreams.